What's up guys? Hey, it's me, Sean Astrom, and I have an amazing tutorial for you guys I'm super excited about. I have figured out a technique for creating a 3D chromatic aberration effect right inside any render engine that supports dispersion. And I'm going to show you guys how we can do that with Corona Renderer right now. Hey guys, so here we are inside of Cinema 4D, and I've prepared this car model here this Ferrari 246 GT. It's a wonderful car that I'm extremely familiar with. Um, no, I'm not really. Um, but I did take a little time just building out some quick materials here so that we'd have something cool to render. Um, but what I'm going to do is uh, go into the render settings here, switch this guy over to Corona. And I like to label this stuff. So I'm going to do that. My resolution is set to this weird 896 by 504 and that's just so we get a quick IR feedback. And I'm going to go into the performance settings here and set the max passes to 20. Looks like it's already there. And then I think I'm good to go. Now if I just fire up my little IR preview here, you'll see we have nothing. And that is because there is no light in the scene. So we are going to go into here and grab a sky object. and. Right away, you'll see we got some nice lighting, sort of. And I'm going to label this HDRI. And I'm going to go here and just create a new light material, HDRI. And I'm going to bring in a wonderful texture from my CG HDRI pack. And I'm going to try this Ohio Sky. These are 12K HDRIs, EXR format. Now if I pop this guy onto my sky here, you'll see immediately we get some pretty sweet looking lighting. Um, so next thing I'm gonna do is bring in a floor and for that I'm gonna use a disc primitive and I might as well increase the segments on this guy. And then quickly here, I'm just gonna create a floor material and For that, I'm going to hop into the opacity channel here and I'm going to load in a gradient. Now remember, Corona supports all of Cinema's built-in shaders. And so that is one of the best parts of using Corona inside of Cinema. And just like that, I get kind of a nice floor that fades off into the distance. And that's kind of really all I was going for there. And I might as well darken this up and maybe add some reflection to it. And I will lower the glossiness value here. And I think that looks pretty good. So the purpose of this tutorial is to show you guys how we can create a chromatic aberration effect. And if we hop over to the internet here, I have some pages pulled up. And what we actually want to do here is I'm going to model this 3D uh, or this camera lens here in this diagram in 3D. Then we're going to use dispersion in order to create this chromatic aberration effect right inside of cinema. And you can kind of see what that is here. It's very popular these days. All of the cool kids are doing it. Um, but yeah, it's a cool effect and it does add that extra level of realism to your 3D renders if that's what you're going for. So back into cinema here, first thing we need to do is add in a camera and I'm going to go ahead and center that up into the world position zero here and I'm actually going to hide my car, do a little save here and I'm going to stop the IPR so we can get in here and I can show you guys what we're going to do. So first thing I need to do apart from adding a camera is adding in the camera lens. Now, if you have ever wondered to yourselves, what the hell is the oil tank primitive for? Modeling a camera lens is one very good use. So I'm just gonna take this primitive here and I'm going to really crank up the rotational segments. So we have a lot of geometry there. And then I'm going to scale this guy down to pretty small size. And I'm gonna zoom in on this guy by pressing the O key. And if I just lower the cap height down a little bit, you'll see what we're getting here. And if I go to a side view here, essentially you can see that I've modeled a camera lens out of that oil tank primitive. 
So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this a child of my camera here. And I'm just gonna scoot that forward so it's just in front of the, I guess that would be the sensor on the camera or where the uh, image converges there. And I just wanna put this lens right in front of that guy there. If we hop back to our 3V, 3D view here and then I hop inside the camera, you'll see that we see our lens there. So I may just scale this guy down. Um, oops, sorry, I'm trying to drag this over here. Scale this guy down just a little bit more, but I don't wanna go too crazy because then these values get kinda super small. Um, but I think that will work. Next thing I'm gonna do is hide this and I am going to build the glass material that we need now. Well, I'm gonna turn on my car, get out here, and go back to regular shading here, and get this ready to start rendering. So if I just create a quick new Corona material, and for this lens effect, all we need to enable here is refraction, which is kinda cool. Um, we don't need reflection in this case. So if I go to the refraction tab, I'm just gonna go down here and I'm going to enable dispersion. And if you don't have this feature inside of your version of Corona, then make sure you go and get the latest beta because they uh, recently added this about a month ago or a couple months ago. And I'm gonna lower this ABBE number. I'm not really sure what that stands for. Maybe someone can look that up. But uh, I'm gonna lower that down to 20. I'm gonna throw that onto my lens. And we will call this as well lens glass. I'm gonna save. Now, last thing I'm gonna do here is add a Corona tag, Corona compositing, and we're just gonna do scene by reflections and uncheck that. Even though we don't have a reflection layer there, um, I just like to, to throw that tag on there. And in fact, we may not need that, but we'll, we'll wait and see here. So I'm gonna close that out and just relaunch the IPR and let's see what we get here. Preparing scene, it's calculating. And voila, just like that, you can see kind of the effect that we are getting. Now you will also notice that we're also getting some lens distortion and a little bit of warping, but that's how we get that chromatic aberration effect, or I suppose you could say it's one of the side effects. So if I hop back over to my reference here, you can see that we're getting that nice splitting or refraction of the different RGB wavelengths based on that effect that we see in glass. So it's pretty much as easy as that, ladies and gentlemen. All you gotta do is model a pseudo fake camera lens and pop it right inside of your camera and put it right in front of the camera. And then we just wanna hide it from our viewport so we can actually see the object we're trying to render. And for this guy, I may change my focal length to 50, zoom out a little. You can kind of see the popping in and out we're getting there. I think with Corona's IR, it calculates the refraction just a hair after everything else. Now, if we go into the actual lens glass material we created here, and I crank up this value here, that will increase the Actually, sorry, that will decrease the effect. If I lower this to 10, I believe it might be the lowest setting, you'll see how that increases the aberration effect. And if we wanted to increase that even further, we could crank up the refraction on the glass, but then you can see that we're getting some crazy uh, distortion from the lens. So it's a pretty cool effect. I'm pretty excited about using this. I would not recommend using this in an animation. Um, I think the render times would be a little excessive for something you can get out of doing it in post. But just being able to do this right inside of your 3D render engine, any render engine, I should mention again, that has support for dispersion. I tested this with Arnold and Redshift, works wonderfully. Uh, you can get this effect without going in and doing it in post. And it's much more physically accurate for sure than doing it in post. 
So just for fun, I may do a nice pretty render here and see what we can't get going here. I'm gonna go ahead and just stop the IPR there and let's go into my render settings here and I'm gonna just make sure that denoising is enabled. And if I do a quick render, oh, that was one from earlier. Actually, well, it's kind of how the IR works. It actually is buffering into the picture viewer as well. I don't know if it's gonna do that for the final version of uh, Corona once it's officially released. But as you can see, it renders nice and quick here. Um, and of course, we can go into the Corona post-processing here. And I could add in a 3D LUT here. Always love these uh, Canon LUTs. And if I drop down the opacity on this guy, add in some bloom and glare, crank this up to 20, maybe 25, see if we can't get some nice little glints coming off of here. Let's get crazy here. Lower the threshold down to 0.5. We should get a, a nice one there. Nice one there. So Corona is just amazing, guys. The fact that you can do this post-processing right inside of the renderer here. If I enable sharpening, that always looks nice as long as you don't overdo it. And yeah, just like that, ladies and gentlemen, we have 3D chromatic aberration right inside of our rendering. Now I'll go ahead and stop that, let it do its magical denoising. That rendered for a whole minute, 27 seconds, and we have a beautifully clean in image here. Um, and why not do one more here? Let me load in one more of my favorite HDRIs that I sell on my site. And let me go in here and crank up through the resolution here to a super high 1280 by 720. And Let's just fire up the renderer and see what we get here. I'm gonna bring in that post-processing tab again and maybe I'll dock that over here. And I don't know guys, I just love this effect. I've always been a fan of it. It's always been a little bit of a pain in the butt to do in post. Um, there are some cool plugins out there for After Effects. There's a great free tool inside of Fusion you can use called the Channel Shifter by Crocodove that you can do it with, but you have to have Fusion Studio. But yeah, guys, I'm probably rambling on here a little bit, but I'm, I just wanted to do one other little quick render just to show you guys um, how this looks. It's a little crazy uh, overexposed there, and I think this LUT is tweaking that out quite a bit. But if we go ahead and stop this, let it do its denoising, that only rendered for 57 seconds. Let's see what kind of result we get here. Man, that looks pretty clean. The Corona denoiser is pretty cool, if I don't say so myself. And if I just crank up the contrast here, and again, that awesome bloom and glare. And yeah, there we go, guys. Uh, 3D chromatic, chromatic aberration. It's a fun thing to say. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I plan to do a lot more of these, and I'm going to try and figure out some cool creative things that are unusual inside of 3D. See you guys later.